Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Two running backs will take the field today in hopes of leading their team to victory. It's Bale Steelers going up against Amir Abdullah's Lions. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, first open in 2002. There's a look inside Ford Field here in downtown Detroit. A few short moments ago, these two teams made their way out of the Ford Field tunnels, and the noise level in this place just about off the charts. They are set for football as the Lions get ready to do battle with Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brandon Gordon. To my left, as always, Charles Davis and C.D. Larry highlighted a couple of running backs to keep an eye on here tonight. And I know you plan on doing just that. I certainly do. Let's face it, we're all going to check in on the quarterbacks and see what they do. But the running back who can take over a game, who can impose his will on the opposite defense, oh, that guy, that's a guy worth watching because he can definitely change the fortunes of his team. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense and Ben Roethlisberger, this crew should be flying high after knocking Kansas City off their undefeated perch last week. Roethlisberger, 252 yards and a touchdown after throwing five interceptions the week before. And questioning himself whether he still had it or not. Sometimes I wonder if when people do that, if they're just trying to motivate themselves. And in this case, it worked really well for Ben Roethlisberger if indeed that's what he was trying to accomplish. 252 yards, a touchdown, and more importantly, a win. Now a carry for the former Michigan State man, Le'Veon Bell. And not going to be able to push this forward. He runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage. On the offensive side of the ball for Pittsburgh, things will look like this. And two of the best skill guys in the league, Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown, back to their old selves in that Kansas City win. Yes, LB and AB <laughs> combined for 346 yards from scrimmage. Monster win in Kansas City. The last undefeated team in the NFL. They go down. Le'Veon Bell, 191 total yards. Antonio Brown, 155. And how about that catch down the stretch that bounced off of the defender, and he catches it. Changes the complexion of the game. This is Bell on the dump off. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 23 yards on the play. Bell is so good at that. He just catches so many passes near the line of scrimmage. In fact, the unique stat line for him last year, he had more yards after the catch than total receiving yards from the line of scrimmage on the season. That doesn't even sound real, but when you analyze his game, you understand why a stat like that can occur. His ability to catch the ball, be elusive, and also strong enough to break tackles, that allows him to gain all that extra yardage. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Now a play fake here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Well, when defensive coordinators game plan to put pressure on a quarterback, they often want to use blindside rushes, and that's exactly what they did there. The cornerback gets to him and drops him. Second down, Roethlisberger. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. And the starting crew defensively for Detroit. Detroit's numbers on defense in 2016 were not horrible. They were number 19 against the pass and number 18 overall, but where they think they'll make a big jump in 2017, 
is being able to get a pass rush going again. Ziggy Ansah, their star defensive end, played with a bad ankle for most of the season and wasn't able to duplicate his double-digit sack numbers of 2015. On third down, here's Bell. And not much room to operate as he'll get this up only to about the 41. Only a yard on the pick up there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. But once again, a good example of situational football. That was third and very long, so you know they were guarding against the pass. And when they decided to run the ball, that was okay. Whatever yardage they picked up, as long as they didn't get to the first down marker, the defense was willing to concede, and they stopped them well short of a first down. to punt as he gets this one away. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. Tough starting field position here. A first carry for Amir Abdullah. And he's able to get this across the 10 before being taken down. That'll go for a gain of 13, helping big time to get away from that end zone. First down. I know it's a cliche and coaches always talk about it's a team game. We need all 11 to win. But let's face it, Detroit really needs Amir Abdul to have runs like that all season long. Missed a lot of time with injuries, especially recently. Now, Theo Riddick wound up leading the Lions in rushing last year with just 357 yards. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They go back to Abdullah on first. Oh, an absolutely filthy juke. He's got some space now. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. Fresh set of downs here. Here we go. Out of the gun, Stafford. Over the middle. It's incomplete. He was trying to get it to T.J. Jones that time. And that'll bring up second down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Second and 10, Stafford again. The completion good. This is Eric Ebron. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Well, from their point of view, this game could not be starting out much better, could it? Force a punt on defense, and now they're moving it crisply on offense. Crisply, I like that. Like yeah, that? yeah, moving it very, very well. Looks like the defense on their heels a little bit. You put a score in here, long way to go, but you're right, that's a heck of a start. Yeah, and I think this is where the play caller is looking at his play sheet and saying, Do I have that dagger play? Do I have that play and just finish him off right now? Because I think they'd love to gain that big advantage early. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. 3-4 defense, usually here you'll see the linebackers come up and make those plays, but the nose tackle, also vital. That was so vital because what you just pointed out, normally he eats up blockers that allows the linebackers to get to the ball carrier. In this case, he did his job and then some, and there was no gain at all for the runner. In his fifth year from UCLA, here's Jeff Locke to kick it away. Back deep for the Steelers, Antonio Brown.
Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. They'll start out on the ground with Bell. Lucky there just to avoid the safety. Able to fight through, but still backed up near the goal line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, he got what he could there, just trying to move forward and, and gain a little bit of yardage and create some space. You know the pressure is going to be tough defensively. Second down following the run. Again, it's Bell. And some space here. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. And now a first down following that long game. That's going to set him back five yards. Still first down. First and 15 here behind the chains. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Going deep here for Bryant. And it drops down incomplete. Thought he might have had it. Instead, second down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. They came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. from Pitt. This is James Conner. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Give him 10 yards on the pickup. And all of a sudden here it's third down. In today's NFL, when you get teams in long yardage situations with your defense, you're really going to go to your speed packages. You're going to get smaller, lighter guys on the field in order to cover the expected pass. So they might want to run the ball against a smaller, lighter lineup with your big guys. And that's exactly what happened on that play. It was tough on them. And now, instead of being in third and very long, they ended up setting themselves up in third and manageable. They've got a chance at a first down. From the gun on third down, it's Roethlisberger. And that is incomplete. As my dad used to tell me all the time when you go to to play a big time game especially when you have one going into a dome setting better strap it up tight because that crowd can really affect things especially on third downs like the one we just saw there with the incompletion here's jordan berry now on for his second punt he'd take a repeat of his first Yeah. 
He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Lions are going to take over with a long field ahead and a first and ten. So the Lions offense ready to go back out onto the field. The last couple of drives have ended in punts. Maybe the crowd minds that, but you're a defensive guy. You're okay with a couple of punt drives. Listen, I'm the guy that loves a 0-0 pitch game all right, in baseball. I can handle that going into the seventh inning. I think the crowd, though, they want to see a little bit more excitement. Let's see if someone can break something free on offense and get going. Offense at a premium the last two drives. Stafford on first down. Throw in deep for Galladay. And he fires one that's intercepted. He's picked off at his own 46. And what a return as he brings this all the way back down to the 20-yard line. the Steelers and this is their third drive maybe the focus right now not so much on points but getting their first first down and when you start off a game you don't even think that's an issue do you but you go a drive a second drive no first down that becomes an issue now you got to think about okay what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up And they'll start this drive with very good field position. Now a first down carry by Bell. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold him to no gain. Here's Roethlisberger. This one complete right side to McDonald. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work, and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. And from the nine-yard line now, it's first and goal. Gun. It's Roethlisberger. Goes underneath for Bell. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. A gain of seven that time. Second goal. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Second down, the ball on the two here, second and goal. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. Well, big man with ball met bigger man on the other side of the line. A really nice play for the defense. Well, they're knocking on the door as they come to the line here on third and goal from the one. They come out here in the eye. They'll try and run it in with Bell. 
And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Only a yard that time, so now a decision to be made here on fourth and goal. Now this feels like old school football because this has turned into a good old fashioned goal line stand. So on offense, what do you do now? Do you decide to run it or throw it if you go for it on fourth down? Now Chris Boswell for the Steelers field goal try. And Boswell's kick is good. And the Steelers will jump out to a three-zip lead. So this offensive unit, they've now had three drives, and they only have three points to show for it. Payoff is the key for everything. How many offenses have we talked to that say we have to finish drives? Thus far, this team hasn't finished it quite the way they wanted to. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Here comes Matthew Stafford now to lead his offense back out there. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. In the drive with Abdullah. And some room to maneuver. Space to maneuver at the 40. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. I don't care what the game plan was coming in. After these runs. You're running it, right? <laughs> you, you, you make sure you keep circling on your play sheet. Running plays that are working and keep patting those big offensive linemen on the back. They're doing a great job. It goes without saying, the defense is going to have to adjust to it In a big way, and they've got to figure out, do they have to sell out to stop the run, or can they just do it better than what they've done so far? and 10 Stafford and it pops free the collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down that's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football really really well done decent offense just better defense I think you're right A second down run for Abdullah. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. It'll be a loss of one. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. The Steelers insert their nickel defense on third down. Yeah, they add a DB. A shotgun snap for Stafford. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. Here's Jeff Locke now as he'll kick it away for the second time. He gets it away, and I think they'll smartly play keep away here from Brown. And this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 20. Five and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. 
The Steelers offense now they head back onto the field and they had three points last time but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three point the kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense they're thinking let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> <Toe> bash. <laughs> I don't know about toe that. Bash. <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> They'll start the drive with a carry by Bell. A beautiful spin and room to run. Le'Veon Bell, kiss him goodbye. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Le'Veon Bell, 76 yards. And the Steelers get the quick strike touchdown. And with that carry, he's already over 100 yards here in the first half. And, partner, you know exactly what he's saying to his teammates right now, right? Especially to the play caller. Give me the ball. Again and, <laughs> and again, again, again and again. It's not that heavy, sir. I'll take it. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. I'm not sure if they drew that play up to score, but it scored indeed. One play on the ground and into the end zone for six. Boswell on now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Lion offense now as they get ready to take over. And down on the scoreboard, certainly last drive punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. On first down at Stafford. And unable to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. Second and ten now. Set, to throw again. Stafford. It's incomplete. Took a shot. Couldn't connect. Kenny Galladay, the intended receiver. Third down here. Wasn't it fun in pregame standing downstairs and watching Matthew Stafford throw the football? I mean, that bad boy it's just a whistled. I he mean, can just rock it. It just whistled by us, didn't it? But what is the one knock on him? Accuracy. Yeah. And that's what we just saw there, an incompletion on that throw downfield. Throwing on third down. Stafford to the right side to Eric Ebron. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. It'll be a gain of eight, but it also lead to a fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. Here's Jeff Locke now as he's on to punt for Detroit. And before the punt, time is going to run out on this first quarter. 10-zip our score. We're back to the Motor City after this. This is the NFL on EA Sports. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. 
you're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Here with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, as the Lions are in possession of the football here to begin quarter number two, but likely not for long as they're in punt formation to kick it away. Here's Jeff Locke now as he's on to punt for Detroit. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Nifty move. It's a net of 40 there. A punt of 48 and a return of eight. And the Steelers will go on offense here first and ten. And Le'Veon Bell making his way back out onto the field now. He's already cruised past the 100-yard mark. We haven't even gone away for halftime yet. He might not want halftime. <laughs> all right, why cool off? Keep well, everybody here. <laughs> let's stay out on the field and keep going. But all that being said, everything is really working well for them. The play calling's been excellent. The blocking's been terrific. And obviously his vision and legs have hurtled him to this big number so far. We could be seeing something really special here. And we'll see how much they give him the ball here. here On oh, first and ten, it's Roethlisberger. And this is caught by Martavis Bryant. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Pittsburgh getting 16 yards there and also a first down. And Martavis Bryant back in the fold, which delights not just himself, but, of course, his quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, this guy, he can do it all, Brandon, able to go across the middle and stave off contact and make catches. Sat out last year, as you're alluding to, year before, though, 50 catches, 765 yards, and six touchdowns. They'll run it now out of the gun. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And that's one of the few times they've been able to contain him. He's had a heck of a game, and maybe he's getting a little bit tired from how many times he's carried the ball. But I always think back to what all those old coaches say. The ball's not that heavy. Keep carrying it, kid. They'll go again with Bell. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. The Lions gave up 177 rushing yards to Seattle in their playoff loss last year. And DeAndre Levy, their best inside linebacker, no longer with the team. That made Jared Davis out of Florida a really good selection for the Lions. On third down, Roethlisberger. And that is incomplete. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in. But it is hard to adjust to a pass throwing a little bit behind you. That one was all the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. Here's Jordan Berry now as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. Pressure here, and they block it. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. And he will score. Touchdown, Lions. Partners, you well know, every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block. Sometimes the guy just finds his way back there. Doesn't matter. The play happens, and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block. Prater for the point after. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10 7 now.
The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. Now a hit and a loose football. So a teammate picking him up there, that was nearly disaster. And the way that you coach these things, you, you want to make sure you have eyes towards the return guy because you want to make sure that the catch is secured. A lot of teams do that. They have at least one guy. Okay, you're responsible for making sure he secures the catch. He's not always the one that makes the recovery, but he can always sound out the alarm. Hey, ball's on the ground. We've got to get it back. Roethlisberger going to hand a bell. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for his big tight end there, Jesse James. And it's third down. The Steelers on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and seven. Roethlisberger. Throw left side complete. It's James. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Good defense holds him to only a yard and it'll be fourth down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Here's Jordan Berry now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Amir Abdullah gearing up now to lead this offense. And I'm wondering if maybe they don't go away from him on this drive a little bit. He's, he's been great, but they haven't scored a lot of points. I think they still have to show him as a threat. Make sure he touches it a few times. But as you pointed out, use him as a decoy a little bit and get the ball in the hands of some other people in order to put more points on the board. But he's done a really nice job of establishing them with his running. Yeah, he's established himself well. Now can they put more points up? Now a first down throw, Stafford. Completing it here to Marvin Jones. A gain of six there on first. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're gonna lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong arm guy who can rifle it in there and they were able to successfully complete that one. Stafford gives to Abdullah on the draw. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. But when you go from second and four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense. The Lions on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This time it's third and three. They'll run here, Abdullah. <laughs> and eventually taken down, but how about that athletic spin move we saw? Gives him the first down yardage. 
A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. Stafford here. Ebron caught left side. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Back-to-back -back nice plays. 12 yards that time and a first down. Eric Ebron's got skills to spare. They just want the production to equal those, and he needs some good health in order to get that done. Had 61 catches in 2016, battling an ankle. Yeah, the surprise, though, just one of those 61 hit pay dirt. First and 10, Stafford, and Jones has it over the middle. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it now. The confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football. But you do say, guess what? We can throw it, we can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. Back to the ground now. Here's Abdullah. And he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And that run was memorable for only one reason. There was absolutely no place to run with the football. No gaps, no creases, no gain. On second down, here's Stafford. Connects it to Roberts, right side. And heavy contact, he is knocked down hard. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. The Lions on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and six. Throwing a Stafford. This is Riddick on the screen. And look out, a big hit to the shoulder pads took him right off his feet. 12 yards there as they move the chains. That's exactly what Detroit wants to do with Theo Riddick. Find a way to get him the ball on third down out of the backfield. Man's got excellent hands. The numbers bear that out. Two years ago, led all running backs with 80 catches. 10 games last year, 53 catches. Play fake here on first down. Fells has it left side. And he'll get it here to the 10 yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Jarred it loose. It's incomplete. 
you can't be precise with your throws, especially in this situation. You're inside the 10 yard line going into the end zone. But sometimes the emotion, the excitement, sometimes the decisions just aren't made very well because of that. The Lions on third down, two for five to this point. Here it's third and three. Again, it's Stafford. Toward the pylon, caught. And he takes this one in for a Lions touchdown. Marvin Jones from 10 yards out. And the Lions are in for six. When you're a great route runner, it makes you that much better as a receiver because now your quarterback trusts that you're going to be where he expects and he's able to deliver the ball on time. Prater on to add the extra point. And that makes it 14-10. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And the end result, a Detroit touchdown. kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Now let's discuss Antonio Brown as he heads back out there now. You better believe that he's well aware he has zero catches right now, and they're losing, so he's probably a little hungry. And you know the guys on defense are aware as well, and they're really excited that he has no catches, but they're also worried because a lot of times, that's like the ticking time bomb. The longer you hold him down, when he finally explodes, look out. Yeah, no catches, though, so far in this game. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Antonio Brown, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Hey, want to switch gears for a second. I'm going way off the radar here. But Tree Cohen threw a touchdown pass last week. Standing at five foot six, and you, a towering you, five foot you six. had an interesting note on this. Yeah, he's the first player five foot six or shorter to throw a touchdown pass in the NFL since we Willie Smith of the New York Giants <laughs> in 1934. I gotta look this up. All right, and we, I've had a lot. We Willie, we Smith. Willie Smith. And I've had a lot of historians say, hold it a second, Eddie LeBaron, remember the quarterback? Eddie was 5'7", folks. He was posting up Tariq Cohen, okay? <laughs> I, I got it right here, we Willie Smith. You are correct. Thank you. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. Bell dancing away at the 35 and he's going to be brought down at about the 33 yard line a nice run there nine yards and it'll be second down and that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut and he's a guy that has some height to him so when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash it makes it a lot easier to stay upright see the field and make a run as we just saw there Here we go. Black bar, black bar. 
Now this is Bryant on the end around. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. He lost two there, and it's third down. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Steelers on third down. A pretty woeful 0 for 5 thus far. This time it's third and three. Play action. It's Roethlisberger. And James has it. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. Roethlisberger to his big target, James. All 6-7 of him for a Steeler first down. Jesse James, 10 catches, 131 yards in the Steelers' two playoff games last year. A more than reliable tight end. A guy who can create big-time plays downfield. But let's face it, partner, you love calling that name in a game, don't you? <laughs> I do. But as we saw right there, he's really reliable on third down, isn't he? Yes, he is. Jesse James. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We'll come back to Ford Field after this. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Larry Ridley will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. So here we go, first and ten now. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Antonio Brown, a 24-yard touchdown. And the Steelers are able to strike for six. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions, and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. That was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Extra point now by Boswell. It's good, and they'll take a 17-14 lead. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown. well on now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. All right, let's discuss Amir Abdullah. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Second down, eight. From 
the gun. Here's Stafford. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. The Lions on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and eight. Out of the gun, Stafford. It's caught, Jones. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Stafford to Jones, enough for a Lion first down. Stafford on first down. And he's got Rome. Finding some room at midfield. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A good pick up there, 26 yards. and 10 Stafford toward the sideline and look at that catch dragging the toes and that's going to be a first down well done and we're back the offense had a chance to talk things over and we'll see what they come up with here on this next play So the offense has it first and 10. A shotgun snap for Stafford. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Encroachment defense. So they jumped on the left side of that line. And you know when you're at the end spot, you are like in the starting blocks, waiting for the pistol to fire and go, and he jumped a little bit too early. And now the offense operates in the red zone. Here's Stafford now on second down. This will be caught just inside the 10. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. Stafford. And 
his throw is incomplete. Eric Ebron, the big tight end, is intended target. And now it's second down. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. Back to throw. Stafford. This will be caught just inside the 10. And here he'll get it down to the 7. They get only a yard there. Now it's third and goal. Now Stafford on third and goal. And down he goes. Pressure gets him back at the 14. Now on fourth down, we've got a whistle here and a timeout. As he'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Now it's Matt Prater on for the Lion field goal try. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalpost. And that will knock things up here late in the first half. And that three-point tally now means we are even here toward the end of the second quarter. And what a way to end the half. Put some points on the board, feel better about yourselves as a team, and you're right back to even. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This will be taken in at the one. <laughs> and not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And we will likely not see another play here as they take the knee and head into the intermission all tied. So thanks to the late field goal, we are all tied up heading to intermission. As we'll send you down to Orlando where Larry Ridley has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. Let's look back now at this closely contested first half. As we look at the numbers, the only thing that really matters is that we've got a tie game. We'll have another half here to figure out who can come out on top. All right, let's get straight to it. Here's some highlights from the first half. Now first and 10, Bell's able to get clear of everybody, and he'll run it in from 76 yards out. Third down from the 10, as they go out in front, 10-0. Stafford's gonna complete the pass, and he kept off the long drive with the touchdown. Lions go up by four. First and 10, Browns wide open here on the catch, and it ends up working for a touchdown. The Steelers go up by a field goal. So that'll do it from here in Orlando. Let's get you back up to Ford Field as we hand it back over to Brandon Guy.
Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. And that time he's smothered as he's wrestled down at the 23. The Lions offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. First half showed us some pretty good offense. Tie game, we'll see what the second half brings. And it'll be interesting because I think both sides feel pretty good about what their offenses are doing. Got to wonder what adjustments are being made defensively to try and get a spark and maybe slow down the other side. But here, do you change up anything on this opening drive? Not offensively, you don't. You've got everything going your way. You're probably prepared for maybe some change-ups you might expect, but overall, you like what your game plan's showing you. On first down at Stafford. And his throw here's incomplete. Kenny Galladay is intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Well, Charles, let's take a step back from this game for a second. We're six weeks into the NFL season. Super Bowl predictions, what do you have? I go back to preseason. We had a little chat about it, and, of course, we both said, hey, let's go out on a limb and pick some wild ones. And, of course, that meant you took? Yeah, I took the Falcons and the Patriots really out on a limb. Yeah, and I took the Patriots and the Packers. <laughs> did the exact same thing. We both kind of went chalk across the board on that one. But now that we're six weeks in, what are you thinking? Yeah, I've got a revision. I'm going to go Browns. 49ers. I love it. Now, <laughs> it's going to be a bowl. Yeah. Maybe, not super Maybe not super in this year. But they're not mathematically eliminated. No, but Who I you mean, take it? listen, Green Bay now might not have Aaron Rodgers yeah. the rest of the way. New England struggling on defense. Okay, if we're going to take a little bit of a revision here, let's go with the Kansas City Chiefs coming out of the AFC and coming out of the NFC. Somehow, defense finds its way through. Seattle struggles their way in and gets it done. On first down, Abdullah. And able to use his blockers to get this up over the 40. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Again, it's Abdullah. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. The Lions on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and seven. From the gun, Stafford. And he connects with Ebron. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A really nice gain of 25 yards. There's a good push to the tight end, and I think they were looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands, speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. On first down, Stafford throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Amir Abdullah, the intended target, and it's second down. Second and ten, Stafford. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down.
This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Stafford looks to throw again. Ebron's got it. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one. And that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. From the red zone now, Stafford. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Bud Dupree able to drop him for a loss of a couple. And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. Not at all, because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. But you take a big sack, it could push you out of range, and that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. And now the offense will look to respond after the sack. To throw on second down to Stafford. And this is caught by Fells right side. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball. How much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. So offensively on this drive, two of two on third downs, and now they face a third and inches. Now Stafford hands to Abdullah, and they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. So third and inches, trying to pick it up, up the middle. He had nowhere to go, tackled for a loss. And you know how we talk about double A-gap pressure, meaning linebackers going in the gap between the center and the guard on either side? Well, it's not always to get to the passer. Sometimes you do that to prevent a running play. Worked pretty well in that situation. Now it's Matt Prater on for the Lion field goal try. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. kick is on the money it's good and with that they take the lead here 20 to 17 and Charles they get the field goal took him a dozen plays though work with me on this one you know what I'm about to say right bend but don't break that's what came into play here for the defense 12 plays were run at them they only gave up three points in a lot of ways that's a win for the defense the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Time for the Steelers offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. They trail offense first time to touch the ball in quarter three and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. And now whistles and a flag. And I think we got to jump here. Neutral zone infraction. Defense. 
So a jump there defensively. That's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. just short of the 45 at the 44. That one good for 14 yards and a stealer first. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral, also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. Keep it on the ground with Bell. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Well, praise has to go to the guys on the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. On second down, it's Bell. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. A gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. So it'll be first down here after the run. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. And they're six yards away from picking up the first here on second down. They stay on the ground. Here's Connor again. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. It'll be a pickup of just two, and it'll be third down. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old-school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. What's that, five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. From the gun on third down, it's Roethlisberger. Over the middle, complete. That's James. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. On the counter, here's Bell. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. That's going to go as a loss of seven, and it'll set him back for second down. But that wasn't just a loss. That was a loss of big yardage there. So the cinch you're starting to get is that offensively, things are starting to pile up against them, and they've got to find a way to stop that. Conversely, how about the great call by the defensive coordinator? He realized that he's got him on the run a little bit. That call was made to get upfield penetration by his defensive front to try and get into the gaps 
get upfield into the backfield and make a big play. I think that was actually called. Not so much just to, you know, to get it done that way, but to say, hey, guess what? We're going to be aggressive, and we had an opportunity and seized it. They get six yards back on the run, but still have a third and long situation forthcoming. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. And the Steelers on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and 11. So that'll back him up five. Still third down. The Steelers on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and 16. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Finding a safety valve here, that's complete. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. It's a pickup of 13, but they're still a bit short, and it'll be fourth down. He's got good size. We know he's tough to bring down running the ball. That also carries over to the passing game like we saw there. And at his size, how would you like to try and stop him on that angle route? Him coming out of the backfield, breaking sharply, catching the football. It's going to take a lot more than one guy, most likely, to bring him down. Oh, look at this. A flip to the kicker. He's going to try to run for it. They're not going to get it. They try to move the chains with a surprise, but it's a turnover on downs. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. I actually like the fake, all right? They gave it a shot. This is one of those plays where you really think you're going to fool people because he shoveled it off to the kicker, and he was going to try and get it running. <laughs> we have seen it be successful before but definitely not on this play. Yeah, I was going to say, as the kicker, when you see that it's probably not going to work, just terror and panic in your eyes, I would imagine. What we really needed there was the close-up of his face in, while yeah. he was running. here on first down. And Jones has it over the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A really nice gain of 25 yards. So there on that play, offensively, they were in the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage, so as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss... Looking for Jones, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Mike Mitchell. And he's able to take this one back to the 36-yard line. And that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. Now the Steelers offense gets ready to get back onto the field. Now 
Now whistles here before the snap, but it looks like one of the Steelers may have moved. Yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Roethlisberger and his throw is going to be incomplete he was looking to hit his running back Le'Veon Bell that time and that'll bring up second down so the defense has put them in a tough spot it's second and long Now Roethlisberger, and McDonald here over the middle. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. And the Steelers on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and four. to throw here, Roethlisberger. He rifles one, it's intercepted. Picked off by Tavon Wilson, and they get the football. They'll set up shop at their own 49-yard line. Oh, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball, and I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. So here come the Lions now. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. After the interception, here's Stafford. He's going to go up top again. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. That's interference. Defense. Well, you won't hear any boos from this home crowd on that call. No, not at all. And it's been a long day for this crowd. Waiting for this game has been a long evening as well. Finally, they feel they got a call. In the red zone this time. They run. Abdullah. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Did your high school have that same push them back, push them back cheer? I was a kicker. Well, it's, it certainly worked. Didn't matter whether we were kickers or not. That one worked, didn't it? They pushed them back at the last snap of the ball, and boy, they created a nice play for themselves. Would they lose three on that yeah, one? Yeah, from the one back to the four. going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Ford Field. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Right, 
From the four, it's second and goal. On the run, Abdullah. Slipped one tackle, but no more as he's knocked to the deck behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll make it third and goal. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. The offense on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third and goal. Now the Notre Dame man. This is Theo Riddick. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Four yards, that gets him close to the goal line, but it also brings up a fourth and goal. This drive started with first and goal. Now that it's fourth and goal, anything less than a touchdown would feel like a letdown to me. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This is less than an extra point, just a 19-yard attempt. And Prater's kick is on the money. It's good. And that will double their lead as it's up to six. So they get the three here, but you wonder whether that's going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, you've now made it so they need a touchdown rather than a field goal to catch them. But you're right. If they'd gotten six out of that drive, this would be a much different game. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. A screen to Bell. No gain on the screen there. It's second down. So nothing there on the screen that time. That means all that great acting they tried on offense went for naught, didn't it? Because you have to try and influence them. Make them think that you're doing something else. Make them think that they can get to the passer by letting them by and then setting up the screen and getting downfield. Didn't happen at all. Give a lot of credit to the defense for not tumbling to that one. Offense still needing 10 yards. Second down. Now it's Roethlisberger. Got his man complete over the middle. That's McDonald. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. That one good for 14 yards and a stealer first. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not even going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. Now the offense lining up first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. On the left side, it's McDonald. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards.
Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's McDonald. And he's brought down, but not before reaching the eight-yard line. A very solid gain of 27. Well, this is how you shape the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw 10 interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident and keep flinging it. I'll just figure there's something wrong with the football. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor, and he'll take this from the nine down to about the seven. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get him in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? And here now it's second and goal. Ball on the seven-yard line. And that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four-yard line. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. On third and goal, Roethlisberger. And almost intercepted. Would have been a huge pick in the end zone, but as it stands, that brings up fourth. Boy, you will not see a quarterback of his caliber miss a one like that very often. I mean, there it is, wide open, got the shot, and he missed five. We talk about, boy, he'll want that one back all the time. He definitely wants that one back. Likely the play of the game here, trailing in the final quarter and going for it on fourth and goal. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. A great effort there from four yards out. And if the Steelers can convert the extra point, they will have the lead. Big fourth down conversion for the score and the defense. That is a tough pill to swallow. Big time for them. How about them just deciding to go for it on fourth down? And, oh, okay, forget the field goal, because that looked like an easy three points. Yeah, you might have had a defensive breakdown in there, but they pressed the issue and found a way to get it into the end zone. Give them big credit for that. And he knocks it through. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it ends with the Steelers finding the end zone. well on now to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Amir Abdullah gearing up now to lead this offense. And there are the numbers. Got off to that torrid hot start. We thought he was in for maybe a career day. Not the case. No doubt about it. It almost looks like a misprint after what we saw in the first half. But let's give a little bit of credit to the guys on our side of the ball. They went at halftime, made a few adjustments. And you know what else? They didn't lose their confidence in how their ability to play. Because a lot of times you get beat down in the first half. It gets ugly in the second half. 
They've come out with a new resolve and a renewed determination. Stafford on first down. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. Stephon it in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Second down, here's Stafford. Throw left side, taken in by Galladay. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. A good pickup there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. Here's Jeff Locke now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. With it is Brown. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. They'll try and run some clock now with Bell. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. So the solid run on first, and I would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play. No, it's all in your quarterback now. He's going to keep an eye on the play clock and bleed things down, and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock. Unless, of course, you're playing a video game, you're trying to run it up on your friend. <laughs> nice touch. Cold-blooded, too. And the offense still has a couple plays to go to pick up the first on second down and three. Roethlisberger with a give to Bell. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation when they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll try the right side with Bell. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. But that certainly felt like an example of a defense just saying, okay, <laughs> we've had enough. We're getting mashed all night long. About time we got a good play in. But flip it over to the offensive side. They've got to be really upset that they allowed a play like that to happen. They were pitching such a great game. They want to keep it going. Now they'll throw it with Roethlisberger. And the Lions 
Gets pressure too strong. Down he goes. Ziggy Ansah. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. And there's no doubt in my mind that this guy has been eager for this season. Talk about Ziggy Ansah. For him to get back to sacking quarterbacks as he did in 2015, 2016 was really kind of a wash because of an ankle injury. So the sack and now a third and long situation for the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger. Roethlisberger will throw. He gets it to Brown, complete. A big third down conversion with a gain of 28. Big hook up there, forced to throw it on third down. The connection's gonna keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. Uses this stiff arm. Some extra space following the display of power. Down just inside the 45. It's a six yard gain on the ground and that'll make it second and four. Well, at this stage, that's exactly what you want offensively. Good run on first down, stay in bounds, keep that clock rolling. And look at that play chart that the play caller has in his hands right now. That's what you gotta focus in on because that's divided up by sections. And right now, he's looking at that four-minute offense section. What running plays do we have to bleed down the clock and take care of the football? Right now, they're executing really well. Throw left side is complete to Rodgers. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. 23 yards on the play. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it, and they got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. A give to Bell. They'll get it inside the red zone, but only for a couple down to the 19. Able to stay in bounds, so the clock keeps rolling. And this defense right now backed up in the red zone. Another touchdown, it's over. They've got to stand tall quickly. Been in this spot before. Now there's a little bit of desperation creeping in, and all you're doing when you're talking to your defensive teammates is first guy there, hold him up. Second, third guy in, break it the football. Get it out. We've got to create a turnover because one more score, and this game's over. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. Pistol, it's Bell. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Steelers on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This is third and eight. 
The give is to Bell. And they'll get him down right around the 16. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. A 33-yarder from the left hash. And Boswell's kick is good. And that'll move their lead up to four now. And that field goal caps an 11-play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Getting set to go again, Matthew Stafford trots back onto the field. This is something we've seen many times over the course of his career. Can he pull off another fourth-quarter comeback? It's very strange, isn't it? Because when it's a player of this magnitude, even though the guys on defense have the lead and are sitting in the best spot, they're maybe the most nervous people in the stadium because they've seen this happen to too many people before, too many teams. They've got to find a way to shut him down. Here we go again for the grizzled vet. They'll look to throw. This is screen to Abdullah. Good footwork at the 30. Seven yards there on the first down screen play. Stafford barking out signals and trying to get his guys set quickly. Back to throw. Caught on the right side by Jones. A really nice gain of 25 yards. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Back to throw. Ebron with it over the middle. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. He'll look to throw. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. So the defense helping him out a little bit here late in the fourth. Yeah, and you're exactly right. And when you're the one doing the chasing, you'll take a little help from the other guys, won't you? Fresh set of downs here. He's back to throw. Open man, the tight end fouls. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. So the false start will back them up five. False start, offense. They expect this from the visiting team when playing indoors, but not the home team. They're supposed to get all the advantages, right? The home crowd's supposed to help them. They forgot where they were, perhaps. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. Stafford now to throw. 
His throw incomplete. He was trying to get it to his tight end, Michael Roberts, there. And it's third down. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Now it's Stafford. It's caught. Jones. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And looked like some movement there. Let's get the call. offense. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. First and goal. Defense with their backs against the wall. Stafford. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. A couple extra defensive backs out there in the dime, and because of that, really not many places to throw the football, if any. And typically, what would you want to do against that dime? Run the football. You want to run the ball, but you can't do it in this situation. Not nearly enough time on the clock. You have to really navigate against a tough defense presented against you. Now Stafford. And he's got it. It's caught for a touchdown. And they have taken the lead here in the final seconds. So for those of little faith, guess what? It got done. They now have the lead with that touchdown this late in the contest. I wonder if that was a play they were holding or a play that they just knew would work from past experience. Well, I just saw it in their eyes on the sideline before starting that last drive, and they did. You're right. They got it done. Looks like they're going to be the winners. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. So that drive goes eight plays, and it's capped off by a touchdown for the Lions. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be fielded at the 6. <laughs> and he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Roethlisberger. Sideline throw. It's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. Second down now after the pass completion. Stop. 
One last shot for Roethlisberger. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Lions as we say so long from Ford Field.